Good evening, my children of the night, and welcome to a spooky edition of Hollywood Lowdown. Yes, my hellish hounds, October is upon us. And with that, the promise of pumpkin carvings, candy giving, and costume wearing trick or treat fun. Well, this month we'll be honing in our powers of darkness and taking a look at the more horrific side of cinema. And with Stephen King's It ending the summer as perhaps the most talked about movie of the year, and still seems to be fresh in the mind of fans everywhere, what better way to ring in the fun and the frights of October than with a look at other Stephen King movies that are also worth a look at. After all, Stephen King and Halloween go together like Rudolph and Christmas, Cupid and Valentine's Day, Kanye West and Regret, and so on, so forth, and so have you. What better way to start off than looking back at the first movie adaptation of It, or rather the television miniseries. Many can't help but compare and contrast the two, but to me it's apples and oranges. The original is still good despite being strained with a tight budget, television censorship that was far more reserved in the early 90s than today, and limited special effects. Very limited. However, the cast is good, and while much of the book is left out, Tim Curry as Pennywise is worth all the movie's other pitfalls. But if clowns are not your cup of tea, slice of pie, or a personal fetish, and I'm not joking, that's actually a thing, there are other horror delights to satisfy your appetite from monsters and mayhem. More of an animal lover, you say? Well then, good sir or madam, take a stroll through the Pet Cemetery. Probably one of the best film adaptations of a King horror book. It's genuinely scary, will make you hug your cat and kids a little tighter, and manages to take out Star Trek The Next Generation's Tasha Yar and Herman Munster in one hour. Or go play fetch with Cujo, the once friendly St. Bernard that turns rabbit after being bitten by bats, which then traps a mother and son in an old car and spends the movie trying to kill them. This is why I stick to goldfish. Or go tangle with some killer rats under the watchful eye of a mutant bat-like creature in Graveyard Shift, or some mutant cat monsters and sleepwalkers that are not only vicious, but also prove Freud's theories to be horribly wrong. Or maybe you're more of a planes, trains, and automobiles type guy or gal, in which case you may want to get behind the wheel of Christine, featuring a possessed car, that kid from Jaws 2, and the lovable old man from Home Alone, who's not so lovable in this and probably would kill a person with a shovel. Or sit back and relax on a flight to nowhere in the miniseries The Langoliers, a made-for-TV sleeper that's so bad it's actually enjoyable in an Ed Wood sort of way, and does have a psychotic Balky from Perfect Strangers in it, as well as killer flying meatballs. Yeah, no, I wish I was making that last part up. And if you don't feel like riding the vehicles, well then, the vehicles can ride you in the incredibly underrated B-movie Maximum Overdrive, where we see a lesser Sheen and Lisa Simpson take on trucks and cars of all shapes and sizes that magically come to life. Sort of like the Transformers, but surprisingly with far more appeal. Or spend time with murderous psychos and some spooky children with unexplained mind powers like the always classic Carrie, the lovable prom queen who electrocutes her principal, bathes in pig's blood, and takes out Vinnie Barbarino. Or check out Hell's Kindergarten and Children of the Corn, children possessed by and led by an ancient evil that isn't Elmo. Or spend some time with Danny and his talking finger Tony as he flees from Jack Nicholson's psychopathic behavior and acts. And Shelley Duvall's, uh, well, well, look at her. That face could scare a starving dog off a meat truck. Come on. Or maybe read a bedtime story with Annie Wilson Misery. Just be sure you give her the ending she wants. God's sake. It's for the best. Hey, please! God, I love you. God, I wish someone would do that to James Cameron. Well, or maybe just jump in with some Anything Goes Horror with anthology stories like Creepshow, Creepshow 2, or Cat's Eye. Stop over at some memorable King hotspots like the small town of De Desperation, where you can get harassed by a sadistic cop and some ancient evil spirits. Sort of like LA. Or stop over to Salem's Lot for some old fashioned vampire fun with half of Starsky and Hutch and the vampire version of Wesley from Mr. Belvedere. Visit Haven for some alien antics and lousy Tracy Lord acting in Tommyknockers. Or Castle Rock for some one of a kind antiques owned by the devil, played by the guy who battled the devil in The Exorcist. Sort of ironic. 
Or if you're just tired of everyone and want to see it all come to an end, then just watch the impressive for a time miniseries The Stand, where almost everyone dies but an evil battle, and in the end the few, the proud, and the strong begin a new chapter in human history while Molly Ringwald strives to maintain a career. And there you have it, some Stephen King fun to satisfy even the most diehard fan of horror. Evil clowns, rabid dogs, devils, demons, psychos, psychics, monsters, aliens, there is something for everyone. An impressive buffet for you to choose from. It's a smorgasbord of scary fun and it's served by one of the best cooks in the horror pantry, Stephen King. Just avoid the shelf that has Dreamcatcher, Rose Red, Storm of the Century, Cell in, most likely the new Dark Tower movie. For this horrifying Hollywood lowdown, this is Mark McCrina saying lock your doors, bolt your windows, and unplug your coffee pots, and prepare yourself for the best in dead time stories. <laughs> and there's supposed to be lightning and thunder here. Hello? Lightning and thunder? Can I just get anything at all? Anything? Boom. Head honcho there, too.